Okay, friends, so this is the beginning of Big Ideas, um, Chapter 2. So, Chapter 2, Big Ideas. Um, it's going to be important for you to have some graph paper, so, um, or some way for you to do graphs. Um, I need to get a different color, okay? Okay, so our biggest thing is that we always start out with, and this is all about quadratics. So in this chapter, chapter two is quadratics, which quadratics means um, x to the second power. Okay, so we're gonna be dealing with parabolas. Okay, and so our big thing at the beginning is always to talk about what does the parent function look like of a parabola. So we need to start with, okay, well, what does what does something like that look like? What does our parent function look like? Well, our parent function, um, I use the term, so let me try to get a better marker here. Let's see if this one works. Not by much. Okay, super strikeout. How about this? Okay. There we go. F of X is equal to, <laughs> oh my, equals to none of Mrs. Bassett's pens are working. That's what it equals to. Guess I'll go with a classic pen. It's X squared. Okay, there we go. So, um, this parabola starts at the origin, the and we call that the part, um, the bottom part would be the vertex. Okay, so if I were to do an X, Y table, I would choose zero and zero because zero squared is still zero. And then I go one, and one squared is one, so I'm like this. And you're like, boy, this sounds familiar. If I do a negative one, it negative one squared is one. So you're like, wait a minute, this is no different than the absolute value. But you'll soon realize that this is not going up, like climbing this way, because look what happens if I use two. Two squared is four and negative two and positive four. So I'm only drawing this next one, one, two, three, four, just so that you can see, and it also is symmetric, just like the absolute value, that I curve up because that x squared makes that climb. So this, label it, is the parent function. This is what I always go back to. What did this look like and what are we going to do to it from there? Okay, so from there we're going to work on all kinds of different um, translations and what they look um, and reflections and stretches and shrinks and all of that good stuff. Okay, so we, I only usually do um, this point, this and these, and then I know it's a curve coming up. Um, it's important if you're going to do slope that you only go one horizontally so it's only um, this amount because sometimes these are going to get wider or skinnier. So we'll work with that. Okay, so just like the absolute value, you know, you know how we went to the left and to the right and all that good stuff. So we're going to deal with all of that. So the first thing I'm going to do um, is really, let's, let's take care of the easy stuff. Let's go horizontal and vertical. Okay, so when we take that equation, so f of x, so we want to talk about what's going on inside and um, outside. Okay. 
All right, so in this case, let's talk about this and I'm gonna color code this for everybody. Okay, do you remember? So the inside, since it's dealing with the X, is talking about a horizontal, okay, translation. So going left or right, which is why I put those arrows there. And remember that it's always opposite of what you see. So I see a negative and you think left, but negative really means go to the right. So this would be to the right three. I tend to write that on the bottom so that I know, okay? So remember, what goes to the right three? Well, remember I'm at the origin. This is my vertex, okay? So I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna move it to the right three. Now, the other piece, do you remember that? This piece on, on the outside here, this is your translation going up and down. Now with up and down, what you see is what you get. So I'm gonna go one up, so one U, okay? Just like the absolute value, it was the same thing. All right, friends, so let's do this. So I'm gonna go three to the right. One, two, three, and one up. Okay, now I'm gonna look out front. And out front is where I'm talking about my slope, just like the absolute value, okay? Remember the absolute value, um, if it was negative, um, it pointed down if it was different. So if there's no number there, we assume it's a one, which is the same as your parent function here. It was a one. And so we're gonna have the same slope. It's gonna be one over one. So up one over one. And it is symmetric. and I graph, okay? So let's just take this parabola and just move it. It's translating it, okay? Let's try another one. Um, we'll use the same one. So I'm gonna do f of x and I'm gonna do, um, um, I'm gonna do, x plus 4 um, squared minus 3. So the squared means, of course, this is a, a parabola. And you know what? I'm going to add a negative on the front of that. Okay? So a negative to the front of that equation. See that right there? Okay? And this part is my left or right. And this part is my up and down. All right, so work on the horizontal vertical translation first. All right, four, four plus four. Well, that's opposite. So that's four to the, the left. And what you see is what you get. So that's three down. So start with that first. Go four to the left, one, two, three, four and three down, one, two, three, okay? And now because it's a negative, now it's still a negative one. So if it's a negative one, okay, that means that my parabola is going to point down, but it has the same slope. So just flip this upside down. So down one over one, down one over one, and there's my parabola. I'm gonna put a line there because that's what that piece. Okay, see, you've got this. See how those translations that we learned with absolute values just kind of goes hand in hand with what we're doing, what we're doing here. Okay, all right. So let's talk about if it is on um, a different slope. Okay, so let's talk about um, a vertical stretch or shrink, and then we're gonna do a horizontal stretch or shrink. Okay, so I'm gonna title this vertical
Okay. So remember, remember vertical stretch or shrink. Vertically, you're doing, it's talking about this. So we're stretching the yo-yo. Okay. So again, I'm going to keep my, since I've got my parent, like, and maybe you even want to take, like, and like highlight your parent because that's pretty important for you to keep that in mind at all times. So this piece here, um, we're talking about f of x. So let's try an example. Okay, so let me show you it first. f of x um, is equal to a times x squared. So this means that there's going to be a multiplier on the outside of the square. Okay, so let me give you an example. So my first example is going to be f of x is equal to two, and I'm gonna put um, x squared in parentheses like that, okay? So that you understand it's on the outside, okay? So I want you to take this parent function, but I want you to stretch it by a factor of two, okay? So if you were translating, you'd look inside here, go left or right, you'd go outside, and then when you go to do your slope, okay? So in this case, here we are. I'm gonna write down my original points. Remember, I'm zero, zero, right? And one, one, right? and negative one, one. If I'm doing a vertical stretch, I wanna take those Y values and multiply by that stretch. So in this case, I still get zero. What's one times two? I get two, and one times two is two. See, I just stretch it that much farther, okay? It's not much, but it does stretch. Whoops, I wanted to get a different color. So what I tend to do is I tend to highlight my new points so that I can go. So I'm stretching. So instead of going up one over one, I'm going to go up two over one, up two over one. And that looks a lot steeper, doesn't it? Well, it should. All right, now can you give me one where I would um, go the other way? Well, in that case, let's come down here. Let's do this. Um, let's do one half um, x squared, okay? One half. This is where, um, instead of going up one over two, it's really important that you put this over one. So remember, this was my slope, okay? or you multiply by a factor of one half. That's exactly what we're doing here. So let's use our x, y chart. So remember I was zero, zero, one, one, negative one, one. Okay, remember from my original? Okay, let's take those y values and multiply by a half z. Okay, so I still get zero. Here I get a half and here I get a half. Okay, so a vertical, a vertical stretch or a vertical shrink, so what I've done is I've made this um, squattier, okay? I've squashed it. So in this case, I'm going to use, um, I'm actually going to use this gel pen, okay, to do this, okay? So zero, zero. And then I'm going to go up or over one and up only a half. Do you see what happened? It becomes wider. Okay. And that is the vertical shrink. Okay. Can, can you see that? That's a vertical shrink, and this is the stretch. Okay? Now remember, that's the same as, as when you talk about it, that's the same as 
doing um, the slope out in front, okay? That'd be the same thing. Up a half over one. That's exactly where I'd put it. Up to over one. And remember, slope is rise over run. So that's going to come into play when we talk about the horizontal, okay? So the last um, switcheroo or the last piece that we want to talk about is probably the most confusing one. And this is a horizontal stretch or shrink. Okay, so remember horizontally. So if I'm horizontally stretching this parabola, okay, so hmm, let me see if I have. Of course, I don't have a rubber band right when I need one. limited on supplies here. So let's take this cord, for example, okay? This kind of looks like a parabola, doesn't it? Okay, are you ready? Okay, so if I horizontally stretch this, look at what happens to the shape. Oh, that's, that's kind of cool, okay? Now remember, that's different than what happened here. A vertical, a vertical stretch, okay, if I do my normal, my vertical was making it skinnier, okay? But a horizontal stretch, when you're moving them apart, makes the parabola skinnier. Now, a horizontal shrink means shoving these together. Look at, so it actually does the opposite of what you think. Here's how that happens, okay? First of all, the horizontal stretch or shrink is going to happen inside the squared piece, okay? So notice it was on the outside here, okay? And it's on the inside in this location. Okay, so that is going to make, that's going to make a difference. The other piece is that when, remember when we're doing um, slope, the X is on the bottom. So because this is on the inside, that X on the bottom, we're going to take whatever number that is and we're going to flip it. Okay, so step number one, I'm going to flip the, the A part. Okay. Then step number two, not multiply your Y's. You're going to multiply your X's because it's affecting the X. Okay, so let's try it. F of X equals one fourth X squared. Okay. One fourth x squared. Right away, let's write down our points. Go back to your parent function. Zero, zero, and I'm gonna highlight those because it's really, really friends, I only use those three points really to begin with, okay? Zero, zero, one, one, negative one, one. That's the parent function every time. So step number one, see how this is a fourth? So if you think about it, what's affecting, see where that four coincides with? That's the X. So this is really, this is really multiplying by four, not one fourth. Because if you match up the X and the Y, it's really the four matches up with the X. Remember, you have to flip. So this is really talking about a stretch. This is going to be a stretch of four. So multiply all your y values by 4, or your x values by 4. So I get 0, 4, and negative 4. Go back and highlight your new x values and your existing y values, okay? 
so that you know what you're looking for. So here we go. I still, I haven't changed my vertical, okay? And now I wanna go over one, two, three, four, and up one. And what I do to one side, I do to the other. One, two, three, four. Of course, this is gonna run into my, my table, right? Why wouldn't it? Now, does that look like I just stretched it? Oh yeah, totally stretched it. Okay. All right, let's do, so this would be a, this is the stretch. All right, let's do a shrink. So I'm gonna come down here. I'm gonna do f of x. You see that all right? f of x is equal to 2x squared. It's kind of hard to see. All right. You know what? And um, just for kicks and giggles, I'm going to throw a negative in there. Nope, I better not. Better not. That'll really confuse people. Let's not combine it just yet. All right, step number one. This two is not really a two. Flip it, okay? If you are matching it up to the x, y, it's really not two. It's really a half. Number two, multiply the excess. So remember, our numbers are 0, 0, 1, 1, negative 1, 1. Take that half and multiply your x values because see, it's on the inside. So 0, um, 1 half, and negative 1 half. Highlight those values. All right, I'm gonna go up and use a red pen here. So here we go. Zero, zero, I'm still there. And instead, I'm going a half on the X, a half, and up one. Wow! That was a shrink, wasn't it? A shrink. I know, it's really, really weird, isn't it? That's the hardest part, um, this piece, um, the backwards, okay? And so from here, um, what we'll do is we'll combine them all, okay? Thanks.